tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to tinfoil hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink. Rock! Oh man, we'll let that one go, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on a fucking wonderful episode of Tin Foil Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to rock. That's right. Joining me as always, my good friend and yours, Xavier Guerrero. What's up? What's up, guys? A lot of things are going on here at the world famous Tin Foil Hat, man. One thing is. We're getting closer and closer to the big 500. And guess what? There's only a couple tickets left. There's like 50 tickets left. Uh, They added tickets. We've already gone through all the official normal tickets that we were normally selling. Now we just have the less of the bonus. Grab those tickets now. And then afterwards, there's stand up. Tempo Hot Comedy. Myself, Eddie Bravo will be there. Xavier Guerrero. Jay Nice is doing his stand up for the first time. And I think, I think I might have off the grid Ryan host it to bring people up. He loves doing that stuff. So off the grid, Ryan, Xavier Guerrero, Johnny Bancourt will be joining us as always. Uh, Jay nice, Eddie Bravo, myself. I think Klaus Schwab jr. Will be there. So it'll be a, a real, a real a team of the retarded. So come join us. It's going to be a great time. Once we're sold out, we're sold out. You got to grab your tickets. And we're real close. A lot of big shows are here, man. I've uh, added a couple. I'm proud to announce. This weekend, I am in Pennsylvania. Okay. And that is on October 1st. And then the following night, I am in Morris Plains, New Jersey at the Dojo of Comedy. This show will sell out. So grab your tickets now at the Dojo of Comedy and more. Let's go to samtriplee.com. And guess what? I got a big announcement, a new, I got a new show. Here we go. It is on set. What are we going in? Oh, nope. I just fucked up. I just realized I messed up. No, 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 no. no. Sorry, 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 sorry. Here we go. October 21st through the 23rd. I am live in Miami. So that's just being added right now. October 21st through the 23rd, I will be in Miami. Come join me uh, on the South Beach. Howie Dewey will be joining me. And then Boise, Idaho. What else is available? Boise, Idaho, Salt Lake City, all there. Grab your tickets now uh, at samtriplee.com. Guys, very excited. Brand new shirt. Go to tinfoilhattshirts.com. TimpleHatTshirts.com. There it is. The brand new t-shirt. That's right. You can get only conspiracies now. Only conspiracies. You get it in black and white or white altogether. I like the white. It looks really nice, doesn't it? Only yeah. conspiracies. Uh, that is, in fact, available now for you in all white and black. Available right now uh, at TinfoilHatTshirts.com. That's TinfoilHatTshirts.com. Plus all your favorites, shape-shifting Jesus, uh, the Taliban skydiving team. That's all there. Only a couple of the uh, Abraxas, the chicken snake god. That's the the very few of them available. Uh, What else is going on? Oh, guys, if two episodes of Tim Fall Hat isn't enough for you, we have uh, some premium content, all of it at rockfin.com, R-O-K-F-I-N.com. You can get... uh, well, uh, guess what? I'm changing the daily dose to uh, only conspiracies. That will be the name of the new thing. Only conspiracies. Uh, so you got your the only conspiracies, and then you have the Q, uh, the AMAs. 
That's twice a week. Then I have two conspiracy social clubs with Brian Callen. Then I have um, Zero, my favorite, my my spiritual podcast. That's available, Zero. And then uh, We Don't Smoke the Same. Broken Sim is available there. So we're, and greatest of all time, all available, dude. All available here for you for only $10. We're talking like, we're talking like we're talking like 10 episodes a week of content for four weeks. So you're almost spending what 40 cents on an episode, four cents on an episode. I don't even know the numbers, Johnny crush those numbers, 40 episodes for $10. What is that go to bro? Was that four cents? Yeah. Something like that. Sure. Yep. 40 cents, 40 cents, 40 cents. That's what I thought. 40 cents. What do you get in this world for 40 cents? Any nothing. Yeah, but it's, less, it, it's even less than that, though, because that's every week and they're four weeks in a month. So, yep. Yeah. Bam, 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 bam. Be able to pay that? Even I can pay it. I think we got to charge more than that. I think we got to start charging more. Johnny, I'll never charge more. Okay. I'm for the people. I say bump it, bump it to 20 like Netflix. Let's do this. No, oh. let's not, Johnny. Stop it. <laughs> Stop pissing off our fans, man. They're good people. They support us. We don't need to do that, Johnny. God. Yeah, we'll wait till later a... when they when they're really in, into it. Then we'll Johnny, shut up. Shut up. All right, so we got a great show for you. <laughs> so we got a great show for you. Uh, we have a great, great show for you guys. We have Richard Grove from Grand Theft World Podcast. He comes, drops a hammer of the gods on you, really breaks down the, basically the, the, the forensics of history. I'm very excited to have him on. It's a great episode. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, thanks for the support. We go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of Okay, so let's get into it again. Let's do it again. We'll do it live. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. Very excited to have this next guest on. He's uh, one of the best in the business. He's had a couple podcasts. His new one is called Grand Theft World. Please welcome Richard Grove. How are you, brother? I'm great, Sammy. Thank you for asking. And I often start out with a mulligan. So you made me feel at home right away. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we were talking about our friend getting housed by another buddy in, in golf. Uh, I have yet to take that off. I don't know, man. Golf is not my thing, dude. I like Croft Maga and learning to gu shoot guns. That's my golf. Second Amendment, being knowledgeable, being practiced, having experience, knowing how, knowing how to explain it to others, very valuable. Krav Maga, personal self-defense. That's part of the freedom triangle. You need intellectual self-defense, uh, non-aggression, and physical self-defense. You put those three together, you can have freedom. However, I stopped playing golf right after, like I, hadn't, I haven't played since 9-11 until like a month ago. And then I started picking it up again because I felt that there was more important things to do than walk around the course chasing a little ball. But there's well, also a place for it in life, you know? Well, I think it's important. Relax. I think what's really important, especially in what we do, brother, mm. is to take something that is is for us that takes our mind off of what we're doing. I I see too many people in our world that are trying to, you know, get information out, get lost in it. They're, they're right. just so focused on this. And, you know, we, it's an old saying, you know, when you stare into the abyss, you know, the abyss is staring into you. And I think it's very important to have uh, hobbies, uh, you know, particularly like people who like are trying to get into the entertainment world when your whole life is honing your entertainment craft and working all that stuff. Yeah. And you don't, you don't have something that takes you out of that just for a second, just to enjoy it. You can get lost and fried very quickly. And it's like, you're all, it's almost like baseball where it's like, you're, you're doing analytics on analytics. So now you're doing, and you see when people become really famous, they start basically their whole act becomes about being famous. It's no longer about like the little things that they do in life. And they start to have a, disconnect you yeah. have to live some life yeah yeah and i've done that a lot more since becoming a parent i've had to uh parse my time because for many years i spent a lot of time just trying to answer questions but it also comes to uh, a bridge where you can communicate that to others and it becomes easier to open up and connect with other people and then the the meaning really is able to take place and substance and meaning can have traction again 
So there's a lot of confusion out there, mostly started by schooling and people, and that gets them off to a bad start. And then they never kind of get straightened out. I, I totally agree with that. Uh, so have, when did you have a kid? A kid, one kid, two kid, three kid? Four? I have uh, one kid. It's a, uh, he's a boy, his son, uh, five years old. He's awesome. And uh, his name is uh, not Luke, but his nickname is Luke. So I got a t-shirt from my buddy, Ernie Hancock. It says, Luke, I am your father. <laughs> Doing the dad stuff of like just playing Legos with them. Or when he wants to play, let's go find zombies and hunt them in the yard with Nerf guns or uh, reading books. Like Jocko Willink has a great kid's book about losing fear and facing adversity and these sort of things. Uh, Mikey and the Dragons, I think it's called. And then he's got a book for like teenagers that I've bought for like my nephews and stuff like that. So yeah, him. bringing- I love him. The history and context back to life and being able to engage fruitfully, successfully moving forward, attaining goals. I think that's what a lot of people are missing. They just get all the bad news every day on the MSM. And then if they go to alternative media, you can learn all about the problem, but it's not always like solutions oriented and it leaves people feeling helpless, which is like, I, I totally agree. Yeah. I, I, I don't get me wrong. I have a lot of black pill friends that I love very much and I appreciate what they do. Uh, but I just don't think I could do this if I thought there was no hope in the end. And I feel like, you know, a buddy of mine last night I was talking to him, Tino, he's a good buddy of mine. And, you know, he's always prepping for the chaos that, you know, is coming. We both talk about a lot, yeah. right? You know, yeah. and, uh, but I'm like, you know, man, people like, our grandparents' generation, their grandparents' generation, their grandparents' generation, all were pretty sure the world was coming to an end uh, in their lifetime. But they and also had root cellars. They had <laughs> nurseries, greenhouses, farms. They had gardens. 100%. Well, and yeah. I'm not against any of that, but my point is, is that yeah. there that is always looming. Every generation assume that the next generation is a pack of idiots and that the end is and is near and if you live in that in that world where mm. everything is just doom and gloom i think you miss out on a lot of the magic of where we live and what we do so i, I in that aspect long long way to get to this but that's why i don't get into black i built black pills now listen because i think it is important to hear them sure but i'm almost like what how do we get out of this and for me it's just like, I just believe there's powers, there's entities much more powerful than the fucking pit viper parasites that are <laughs> seem like they're in control right now. Intra-specific kleptoparasites. Yeah, They're dude. within our own species, but they kind of steal our own energy. There's a, there's a lot to unpack there. And I'm more, if you want to use that type of label, I guess is white pill an optimist. Because yeah, regardless want, of all this evidence I've collected on the problem, I've always been optimistic that we don't know everything yet. People invent cool stuff every is. day. I think their, their end result with this whole pill thing is to go rainbow pill and it's, it's all just going to be Skittles <laughs> and they're going to be having people taste a rainbow. rainbow. <laughs> I don't know, man. You know, red pill and blue pill made sense. And then it started getting a little out of, out of hand. You spilled the Skittles. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know what flavor. I don't is there a watermelon pill? I'll be watermelon pill, whatever that may be. And a little white with a little red, you know, and their hope and just know what's going on. But I can't get into the black pill. And not that I don't, I, I love having them on the show, but I always like, okay, uh, is there any happiness at the end? And I do believe that there is. I believe like if they were as powerful as we they want us to believe, they would have just came in here and wreck shop. They have to do yeah. everything slowly behind our backs in, in small increments because the minute we, and maybe we'll, we're, we're so divided, it's going to be hard to get here. But the minute we come together, I feel like they struggle and they're, they're fucked. Yeah, that's definitely what they want to keep. A, they want to keep us apart and divide and conquer. And that's been a theme of rulers for thousands of years and trying to control people. Uh, the ability to do that comes from not letting us enhance ourselves with education and communication skills. It's by dumbing us down to make us controllable like pigeons or mice or rats that are all 
operant conditioning, <clears throat> Pavlov, Skinner, those types of early 20th century modalities where they discovered human beings are really hard to control. If we want them to be like a clockwork oranges, we have to just dumb them down. And they did it sequentially over a series of decades. And so when the, the past hundred years of generations have always thought the next generation is going to be dumber and they're bringing the world to an end, it's kind of true, but we have the technology today to actually do it. They got working papers and plans to do stuff like what's going on out there. So there's a lot to catch up on, but I see it as from the optimist perspective that there's so much we don't know. People can invent anything at any time. Freedom can break out. Freedom is meant to be unrestrained. Slavery on this planet has been a thing for thousands of years. We can outgrow it. We can outknow it. But first, we have to learn about our own rights and self-responsibilities and how to maintain those. And then we can group together voluntarily and associate in larger numbers to make sure that freedom still exists now and into the future and about getting to the happy ending. I like to think that we can pursue these events and, and try to better the world and be happy at the same time and not wait till later. That's what they want us to do. I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Now your new pot, you, you're like me. You've had a couple podcasts and I tell people this. I've all been the around. Time. Yeah. But you know, that's the beauty of it. I always tell people, man, start your podcast. Now it might not be the podcast that you end up, blowing up off of or making a living off of but the sooner you get going the sooner you realize this isn't the podcast i need to do another one and that one may not work this yeah this tim fall hat on this feed is like the fourth i think the fourth podcast i had the naughty show then i had uh the you know my ranting show then i had in, uh international bad boys and i had this one and you know you got a just, bunch of shows since then too yeah, and then Cash I have a daddies. thousand. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm out. Who's that cornerback, uh, uh, Johnny Romeo Camarade or whatever his name is? That has like 19 oh, oh, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Antonio Camarade. Yeah, yeah, that's how I am with podcasts. But each podcast is very specific and done for a very specific reason. It, it's like I just need to learn learn a new skill. You know, it's like oh, I know kung fu. Whether it's spirituality. <laughs> or uh business i'd love to get you on cash daddy sometime and you know I, I i like to learn things and like the best way for me to do it is through podcasts so yeah man i think it's very important to i was trying to solve like a practical problem back in the day i didn't know anyone who podcasted at that point i just wanted to get a message out i had an audio message it was like an mp3 and then i was like looking around and it's like you could start a podcast feed and i was like okay I'll, i got this one what do I do after that? And then I started making theme-based episodes. And so, so I've been doing long form content uh, since 2006. It's still posted on iTunes, hasn't been kind of shaken out yet. And my first podcast was 9-11 Cindy and it was going into a whole bunch of facts and evidence that was inconvenient to the, the narrative that I figured would be censored over time. And this was like a time capsule to preserve it. And then my second podcast from 2009 to 2018 was called Peace Revolution. And that was all about defining who is they, who is the new world order? Who are the globalists? What is their agenda? Are there evidence and artifacts to go with this? And I had up to like 20 hour podcasts and it's not me talking, it's me playing the evidence of this theme of how the United Nations got created or how JFK was assassinated or what, what is Operation Gladio or all these other things that I had read in all these books about. And then I would go out and search interviews with the authors and the people that they interviewed in the books, kind of compile those together into a time capsule preserve it for people now like truck drivers people who are out doing things that like long form content those have been my fans for the past 15 years and then grand theft world is more let's analyze current events because they're changing things so fast let's bring the history deep dive analysis let's see what's actually going on and uh those shows run usually weekly live for like six or eight hours okay hey everybody I want to tell you about our friends at Urban Isa, okay? Urban Isa was born in 2010 in Stockholm, Sweden, out of a love for cities and urban life, okay? Drawing inspiration from the world's great cities and rooted in Scandinavian design traditions. Their products are sleek, stylish, and sound great, okay? And I can tell you, I love them. I, uh, here, I'm going to give you a personal endorsement. I love these things, okay? Johnny, give a personal endorsement, please. I love them. Yeah, they fit really well. The sound quality is amazing. It's, uh, yeah, and it's... And Xavier, I, I can, you, can you give us one, too? There's nothing better than this. If you, if you work out, I mean, these are top-notch. These are top-notch, okay? Until you discover... Listen, man, here's the whole thing. 
with most audio products out there, there's always a compromise, either on sound, look, or the price just won't be right. Okay, not with Urbanista. That's right. There's stylish range of audio products that get the sound right, the look right, and the fit and the feel just right. Okay, they're colorful assortments of lifestyle audio products, including active noise cancellation headphones, true wireless head earphones, okay, and wireless connective speakers, okay? Do not compromise on either sound or quality. Do not compromise, all right? Don't do it, all right? Design for life in motion. 365-day warranty on all products. Urbanista has a free and easy 90-day return policy. So if you're, you're not happy with them, guess what? You can return them, no questions asked, okay? So right now, okay, Urbanese has got a great special offer for the Swarm. That's right. Tinfoil hat for life, Urbanista. This is all you got to do. Just go to urbanista.com slash tinfoil to get 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off everything. You can get free shipping for all orders over $60, man. Just go to urbanista.com dot com slash Tim Foyle for 20% off. That's U R B A N I S T A dot com slash Tim Foyle. Get the headphones, rock out. And who they they're like are, the Eddie we- Griffin of podcasting, right? I mean, Eddie <laughs> used to do like five hour shows at the comedy store. I'm I'm impressed, dude. I'm impressed. That's that's wonderful. And I think that's very important. And I do believe Uh, You know, there are people who consume that, like those conspiracy guys do like long forms like that as well. And I love that you do that kind of research and put it all together because most people, unless it's handed to them, they won't they won't spend time to actually. It's hard even if you hand it to them, them. but they definitely don't have time to suss out like what is the actual first edition of the book with the real quote and how do we actually get that into some sort of media so people can pass that around to each other. So I do all the heavy lifting. I find the stuff, I buy the stuff, I analyze the stuff, I archive the stuff, I reference it and put it out there so that people can get it into circulation in their conversations or at least in their own intellectual self-defense. So they can't be fooled so easily by the things that other people are easily fooled by out there. You have too much contextual history to like misunderstand your way out of it. It is interesting times. I mean, like so much of that's gone on in our world. No, but even if you think that history isn't real, which I, I, I believe they've completely shish kebobbed it all. But I liked your episode on like the, the Middle Ages and Roman Empire didn't exist. That was a good episode. Yeah, yeah those that, guys are I'm great. Fascinated. They start off weak, though. They start off with like, look at this picture of a pineapple. And I'm like, that's your first <laughs> argument, bro. You, and they're great. I don't I, I, you know, like later on, as more people came and talked about it, there was a more concise delivery of it and there's nothing I, yeah. i'm very thankful those guys came on uh when they started off talking about pineapples and pictures <laughs> that's when i thought oh, you can start off ta- talking about pine cones and the pine cone at the vatican and your pineal gland and stuff like that that could be a question but the, the other one i don't know pineapples tell me about your program dude uh, uh, autom- uh, uh auto- autonomy autonomy it means to be tell me about. yeah self it doesn't mean you have to do everything as a lone wolf it just means if you know how to do things for yourself and you know what your offer is the world and you can convey value to others easily that makes you easy to work with right so the things that they took out of our education system in america in order to subjugate us over the past hundred years critical thinking creative problem solving uh conflict resolution communication skills that's a set of skills that they took out right There's another set of skills that would allow you to have excellence in entrepreneurism, be your own boss, do all these things, have more options than getting a paycheck or getting a jabby or any of these types of things you're doing these days. So I had the advantage during college. The irony is, man, I had, I was going to get a business management degree and I was working at fast food shops and I saw an ad in the paper. It's like make 10 grand this summer. And I was like, what do I got to do? Cause I only make three grand. So what's this about? It was learn how to be an entrepreneur. And I took the the course and got the job and ran my own business for several summers in school. I sold that business to my brother. I then took those skills into the corporate world and I made really good money, better than any of my other friends were getting with even better, more expensive degrees from better schools. Then uh, in the early 2000s, I kind of mothballed all those skills and I got into the history and research and production, all these new things, how to learn stuff pretty easily. And I can, right? 
I came to have a whole audience of subscribers and some of them were like, Hey, it's hard to pay the subscription fee. I don't have a job. And I was like, this is nonsense. This can be easily solved. I should create a course and package it up and put back the things they took out of the education system to make it schooling, to make people compliant little fish that follow, you know, the cues of all the others and um, put these entrepreneur skills in. So um, how to do sales. Most people cringe at sales and they think it's dirty. And it's like, I can show you sales is high volume, uh, high value problem solving. It's not cringe worthy. It's not pushy, persuasive. It's not none of the, the stuff that we associated with it. You're working with people to solve high value problems. And if you come up with a plan and they accept it, they give you money. It's like pretty simple conversation. And it's the same type of conversation that you would have to do an interview with somebody. So the first skill I wanted to give back to the students was let's break down these walls of communication. We're all shy and introverted. Here's a methodology. And if you practice this 10 times with 10 other students, I promise you, you won't be shy and introverted anymore. Meeting the other students, learning about their goals. So we go through weeks of course curriculum. It's 12 weeks. Um, each lecture is hours long. And they're learning, they're unlearning, they're getting unindoctrinated at the beginning. And then they get stacked with all these high value skills as they go through. It's a lifetime enrollment. So I have many, many students that keep coming back and improving their skills and raising the level of their business. And then for some of them that graduate, they can cross the street to our consulting and digital marketing agency, Economy Unlimited. We help people like maybe influencers like you, Sam, to get marketing, these sort of things. And um, that it's entirely staffed by the autonomy graduates. So you have a excellence, people who operate with integrity, who know how to work with each other without friction. So it's a drama-free workplace where like people are cool and we're making a lot of productivity every week. So it was a, a world need. And I was like, I can offer value in that area. And with some marketing, now we're in season six, I've been doing it three years. And we do between uh, 75 and 100 students per season. I love it, dude. I really do love it. And because what you're talking about and to me, and, and I could be wrong, is understanding the game that needs to be played. And for me, man, you know, I, I, you know, social media, well, I'm an old man now. I don't really engage in a lot of stuff. I've kind of pulled myself out of Hollywood. I hear you I say do. that, man. You're not an old man. You're, you're not that much older than me. And I'm not an old well, man either. Well, you know what, man, I compared to what I used to be, which was running and gutting. I blow, used to be really bad ignorant. Decisions. That's how I think of my younger self. I wasn't, I wasn't asking <laughs> yeah, I enough do. questions I, for myself. Yeah. I would, I would agree with that. And I would say, uh, I was ignorant as well earlier and I'm much more awoken now to the stuff that I value. That's important. But what, what, I, what I'm, I'm trying to get at here is like, you know, when I watch culture right now and what people are trying to do, um, we, we are see, you know, there's this video going around of uh, these kids at ASU and the, these, the, the, this kid has a police lives matter and he's confronted by two kids uh, African-American kids, black kids from Arizona State tell them they are in the wrong section. They can't be there. And I just listen to these two girls talk to these, these young boys. And I go, they have been trained improperly. They do not understand the game of life and the game. And when I hear somebody talk about culture, like there's a, there's a article that went out, uh, it has a picture of a black woman on it. And she's like, uh, I drink because of racism and I kept drinking because AA won't allow me to be black. And I go, you are what? not learning the game. And it's not, it's like when people go, Oh, it's white culture. I go, it's not white culture. Cause we see it in other cultures. It is the culture. It is the game of stability. Okay. Like you, people want to know that you're stable enough to be able to, you know, finish the business transaction that, you know, what you're hired to do, you're going to be able to do. And when you come, you know, and it's like, it's like when I used to go to court, Richard, I would show up in a suit, people showing up in fucking FUBU and fucking pajamas and fucking flip flops. And I'm like, you're not playing this game. It's not a white culture, man. It is the, it is the, it is the game of stability. Sam, what's the, what's the AA thing? I, I didn't. What, is there an accusation of racism with AA? I've never even heard that. No, it was this stupid article. This woman was saying like she couldn't be, she couldn't be black in AA, and I, I've never heard that yeah, yeah. ever. I mean, ever. I mean, people get. Ex I mean, like it's just it's 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 people that are 
looking for some sort of uh, ex- some sort of way to uh, explain away why they're not where they are and yeah. why they're not living the life they want to yeah. live. There are answers to that, as the uh, <clears throat> the 20th century bard Terence McKenna once said, "Culture is not your friend." And maybe yeah. that's Jordan Peterson. I mix them up. <laughs> All right, so um, this theme of unhappiness and divide and conquer that's out in the society is, is on purpose. You could even say it's a symptom of the psychological warfare. What do I mean by that? Racism. You know, the New York Times used to have a place on their website. There was a different site. You could search the time and word usage and frequency. And if you go in there and search for the word racism, it's a big flat line until 2012 when it spikes. And all of a sudden there's racism everywhere because they're printing about it. Right. So the use of the word racism in the New York Times suddenly spikes uh, in 2012. I investigated what is the origin of this word racism? I went to the Oxford English Dictionary, I had the online software, and it said that uh, the, the first use of racism in the English language came from H.G. Wells in 1932, and that he got it from Trotsky's History of the Soviet Union from 1924. Prior to that, it was called racialism. So just the specific term, the shortened term of racism came into particular use, specific use in the English language by someone who ran psychological warfare for the British Empire during World War I, which they suckered us into and like sunk the Lusitania. There's a whole bunch of evidence on that. So they're not our friend is what I'm saying when they're doing these types of things. So the culture that we're seeing today, this divide and conquer is, is sparked by media. And then it's carried on by people who assume that's the big evil here on this planet not to question things and just assume that what you're being told by these sources these so-called authorities is true and then people take action on it as if they have gone investigated looked come to a conclusion on their own about these things so when you can get a bunch of people hundreds of millions of people to act in the same way in mass that's a result of schooling right just like a bunch of fish or birds uh not individually thinking but they're moving in in schools and groups right that is like the par excellence application on the public. And when they did this whole COVID thing, they knew they were going to have resistance, but they got such a better result of complicity, supplication, subjugation, and people just bending over and asking for more. Yes, please. Yes, yes, please. May I have another? That's what they're doing out there to people. And so it's not something they made up just like in the past couple of years or anything like that. They've been working on a plan to subjugate everything person animal and resource on this planet for over 100 years and they write copiously about it in the english language it's not even like we have to read mandarin because the only reason china is a problem today is because british uh east india company subjugated that continent with opium for a, a city and then came in with the rockefeller medical establishment to modernize china family open it to trade in the 70s so the thing that's over there that's like the other that we might be going to war with it's run by the same group that runs this country and puppets the president over here. Every They're almost war done, man. Funded yeah. by the same people. And from what I've been told, and I've talked to people over there, the, the, like this World War Three rhetoric that you're seeing, like really ramping up over here, it's not going on over there. It's not going on over there. And to me, there's no it's market for it over there. It's just, I mean, we'll fuck them up. But I just don't think we need to get to that. I mean, I, and just, you know, you hear people on the the left, you know, Robbie Martin, mm. uh, you know, that talk, and, you know, I've had him on my show a bunch of times. And he always says, man, a lot of this Chinese rhetoric is just from the U.S. government to drum up war with the Chinese. And you're like, and you're like, OK, man, you know, it's like with the with the uh, the Uyghur uh, camps. You know, I talk to people in China. They're like, that is to help them get back in to society. And that, but the way it's sold to us, and I'm not saying it one way or the other, it's getting sold to us as it's concentration camps to drum up this kind of anti-China rhetoric that's going on. And it's just I mean, because you're totally right. 
that, you know, the same people that are running it over here are the same people running over there. They got the Lee family, which is the royal bloodlines of China, but they're all related. All these bloodlines are related. Hey, everybody, I want to tell you about our friends at Lucy Nicotine, okay? Lucy Nicotine is a company founded by Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative, okay? Finally, tobacco has an alternative that doesn't suck. All right. Research and developed for three years to be made for people, not patients. Lucy has created nicotine gum with four milligrams of nicotine and comes in these three flavors, wintergreen, cinnamon, and pomegranate. Holla at your boy. Okay. Lucy has lozenges. Okay. With four milligrams of nicotine that include the following flavors, cherry, ice, citrus, and mint. They went hard in the paint on that. Okay. And it's convenient and discreet. Products can be enjoyed anywhere, on a flight, at work, at the gym, on the go. It doesn't matter, okay? So it's 2021. Get rid of your cigarettes, unplug your vape, throw out your dip, okay? And get some Lucy Nicotine Gum or Langeus, okay? This is the real deal. A subscription to Lucy comes directly to your door each month. It's so simple and you don't have to leave your house because Lucy has delivery down. Okay, Lucy. Lucy, Longages, and gum. Okay, also have FSA and HSA eligible. So you'll be able to spend pre-tax dollars on them. Okay, this is for the TFH swarm. Okay, go to Lucy.co, C-O, okay, L-U-C-Y dot co and use the promo code Tin foil to get 20% off all products on your first order, including gum or lingerie. Okay. <laughs> this is Lucy.co. Use the promo code tinfoil at checkout. Okay. I also have to give this disclaimer. Warning, these products contain nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is addictive chemical. Okay. Lucy.co and be sure to use the promo code tinfoil. What do you have to say about where the fentanyl is coming from? You don't have to say that's from China, from the opiate yeah. wars. Yeah, back the question us. is, just like the CIA with the crack, you know, we, we were told it was Pablo Escobar that was smuggling the coke in, when in reality it was the CIA. So why wouldn't <laughs> this be any different? Hey, I got, I got something for you. This is synchronistic because I know it's his birthday today. Since you brought up the drug war and the cartels, the CIA, that sort of thing. There's an Amazon film called The Last Narc. It's a series. And then there's uh, Narcos Mexico. OK, I wrote a pilot for Netflix with my buddy, Paul Verge, and we submitted it um, to be a narco spinoff. Right. It was based on this DEA whistleblower. This guy was the most heavily decorated DEA undercover agent of all time. He infiltrated the Medellin, the Cali, the Guadalajara cartels. And so we interviewed him in New York City for like five hours and we had all this footage. So that, that's what we made the three season arc from. Right. Netflix said they didn't want it. They didn't want to buy Hector's story. They made Narcos Mexico. That is the exact same three season arc. But Amazon picked up his story and they made a series called The Last Narc. And in there, the, the people who kidnapped Kiki Camarena are on film and they tell you who, who paid them to do it. And it comes back to uh, people in the CIA, people in our own government. And he says there was the one quote that shook me when we were filming him. He said, I, when I started this, I thought my government was as clean as the driven snow. And we are like, and now he's like, and now I know that the, they're the ones behind it. And it's an incredible story. His name's Hector Bereas, B-E-R-E-L-L-E-Z. And uh, the last narc on Amazon, check it out. But then watch Narcos Mexico to catch how Netflix spins it and uses the CIA's version of events to kind of muddy the waters and give you like pseudo entertainment, but that's not the, the actual fact. I, I, I can't the watch witnesses. any, I can't watch any political docs on Netflix. There's well, it's no not. way that they're giving you maybe on sports. I yeah. could, I could see it if I like it, but like, uh, 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 I'm like, Oh, do you see the Epstein? I like, I go, no. it's not real. No, it's no, done no, by no. somebody who worked for the Clintons. I mean, like you just got to dig deeper and that's like such low frequency shit going on on Netflix right now. I can't, I, I can't, well, I, I dip my toe in it. Cause I, I would get rid of mine, but my old man in air in uh, Arizona uses my, <laughs> my membership and uh, he needs it. Cause he, he's like 75 and he doesn't give a fuck about anything. He just wants to enjoy the rest of his life. 
But for me, man, you turn it on, you dip it in. It's all like murder, suicide, demons. Uh, hey, Not stuff that's going to help you in your life to survive and thrive. So we got to reprioritize. Like, uh, I got a couple numbers that I teach in my course. One of them is like 26,400. Well, what, what is that? It's an amount of time that you have in the week. And when you start looking at more granular time on minutes and seconds levels, we start to realize like, what is my investment into myself during the week? And what am I getting from playing video games, going to the bar with the friends, you know, doing these stupid things on Netflix or Amazon or whatever, not as relaxation, but as like binge watching, taking up large chunks of your time. And I challenge the students that if they reappropriate 10% of that junk time, they can make incredible gains and learn a lot I'm more totally about themselves. And that's man. what we're missing. We're missing the rites of passage, man. We don't have rites of passage as they had in indigenous cultures where men be like boys become men through some sort of, uh, you know, arduous struggle against the self and against the, you know, a fear and overcoming fear by knowledge of self, these ancient kind of things that were taught to uh, men in the past in order to have that type of survival capability and the, the mental dominance to be able to meet and greet your challenges with a smile, a plan and a fucking resourcefulness to get her done. Because that's how America was carved out. That's not how Europe was made. They were just subjugated for a thousand years and they didn't know any better by the time people started thinking about terms of freedom, like Montesquieu and some of these other people who started the, you know, in the Renaissance thinking about these ideas. Do we have freedom? Are we individuals? Should we be slaves? Like there's Epictetus. You can go back thousands of years and read from like philosophy from Roman slaves and learn about hey, things haven't changed that much. They call them different things and you know, different words for different management authorities, but there's still a lot of bread and circus to distract the audience from the meaningful, substantial things that get them reconnected with life. Part of that is learning about the problem and how, to, is, how does it exist? How, how do we cut it off? But then there's the, what do we have to do with ourselves to actually take change and be the change we want to see in the world and positively affect others in a white pill way? Because there's too much black pill negative, and I just take that from people who haven't done enough reading to see that there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of cracks in the Couldn't plan that these more. people have to subjugate us. Could agree more. You know, you brought up some through this rite of passage, this thing about overcoming obstacles. Yeah. And uh, there's there's a lot to unpack with that. And, you know, my big problem with the Simone Biles, was that her name, Johnny? Simone Biles from, you know, is like there this this kind of like movement within the media to say how brave she was to not compete. And to me, that goes against everything I ever learned in life. And, you know, you are an Olympic level champion and you are getting all the endorsements because you are mentally and physically above everybody. And I don't know how many times I, I just, as a stand up comic, I had to go up when I wasn't feeling right. When I was sad, I'd lost a family member. I had to grind through it because bills had to get paid. And this notion that because you're not feeling right, you're not feeling right that you should step down and that's okay. Or not compete. I have a real problem with it. And the way she would, I like, you want to not compete. I get that, man. I can get that. The, but the, to fucking show you like you're some brave soul. You know what brave is? Going out there and getting last when you fucking mentally didn't have it, but you still fucking tried. And the message gets sent to people. Hey, man, it's okay to quit. It's okay. When it gets real tough, you're not feeling it. It's okay to quit. And guess what? It's not okay to quit. Because you know what? My father, my grandfather, my father was a train wreck, okay? I love him to death giant fucking train wreck but if i got something from them is fucking keep grinding even when everything's blowing up in your face and all your plans are going completely sideways keep grinding and th what this girl does now we've had this guy alex stein uh prime time alex stein on and he was talking about how simone's brother mysteriously got out of a triple homicide the exact same time that she's deciding not to compete, which is a very interesting thing in itself. And that might be a whole nother episode, but you know, it's very interesting, but you're stepping down. Now everyone's, Oh, you're so brave. You're so brave. Thank you. It's like, I, I, and they're like, Oh, she's been through a lot. I get it. But we revere her because she's the best ever do it. And the bet. And, and, and this is going to be something very interesting. We're seeing this a lot with female athletes that they're starting to go through a lot of stuff through mentally mm. 
that they can't compete. And it makes you wonder, are we shoving female athletes into a, a cookie cutter man cookie cut I, if that's what i'm trying uh, if that's the correct way to say it like are we telling them they have to do the same thing men's do men do when all we've ever been told is that men and women are are, are physically different psychologically different their brains are different are there so i mean are we doing something like that what are your thoughts on that i know i i, I went all over the place on that. no that's good i can follow you all the way through that maze uh so first off this uh, culture of where it's okay to quit. It depends. It's okay to fail because you have to fail to succeed. You, most people don't take action because of the fear of failure. So one of the things I teach students is go out this week and fail 10 times at X, Y, Z, collect your failures. That is your success. Collect I wish a million failure. failures on you before you get your one big event. I swear to God, right. I yeah. hope you get a million failures. So you have enough tools to understand why you failed. So when the big thing comes, you don't have to fail right so lose, losing succeed. that fear of failure but quitting i said yesterday to the students when we were doing a q a session i said my dad taught me a lot of things but he never taught me how to quit and i have quit things in the past but it was no example from my old man and the one time i could think in college where the entrepreneur training it was very competitive to get into that course to be able to earn that money i remember there was a weekend of training and they were going to weed people out and I didn't make it that day because I was out partying the night before and I wasn't feeling so good. So they called me and they're like, hey, you're not here. I'm like, yeah, I'm sick. And they're like, what's wrong? I'm like, oh, my stomach and toilet and this stuff. They're like, well, we got toilets here. And this dude talked me out of a situation that I was going to I was going to give him the Heisman and be like, I'm going to keep you know partying with my friends. He got me to go to this thing. I got such valuable training. I made tens of thousands of dollars that summer. And then I continued doing that. And then when I went into the corporate world, I made, you know, seven figures by the time I was 30 with that skill set. And if I had succumbed to the fear and let myself talk myself out of that opportunity and hadn't had somebody strong that said, look, dude, I'm going to take away your excuses. So all you're left with is success. That lesson that has brought a, a lot of joy over the years, but I didn't think I could do it at the time. <laughs> and that's what it is being able to talk ourselves through or having the support to help talk yourself through those situations is essential to succeeding. And people aren't getting that anywhere today. They get the opposite. Everyone's all about schadenfreude, taking pleasure in anything negative that happens to you. Uh, you know, someone's got something good going on. There's just hate for them. Something bad going on. They celebrate that. It, you know, they celebrate when people get sick and die from this fucking illness. Yeah, right? it's so crazy. And it's just like it's all it's all identity politics. It's I'm really gone. Xavier. Imagine if you would have uh, just said, "I quit in Tacoma because we found out some bad news right before the show." Do you think anybody would have called you brave? Yeah, 100%. You brave? Right before we went on, we found out some weird shit. Right before yeah, we went that's... on stage. It was a down, it brought everybody's mood down. Sam went up there and killed it. Imagine if you would have been like, hey, guys, I have some mental stuff. I can't go on. Do you think anybody would have been like, oh, Sam's so brave. Look at him be so brave. Yeah, I totally agree with that, man. And it's just like, and it's just, you go, what, what is this narrative being pushed? And I want to get into, Richard, your thoughts on um the school system because you have some notes about prussia and stuff like that that i think is very important i think that our pharmaceutical companies are so powerful that they're affecting our school system that we are creating people that as soon as they leave college and go to the real world their lives and their minds fracture because everything they've ever been taught isn't true and now they have to deal with the consequences of that, that their brainwashing and, and their programming was a lie. And that's why we see a lot of people on pharmaceuticals right now. Dude, it's worse than that. So first off, I got a buddy who used to do the School Sucks podcast. And b before he did the podcast, he was like a teacher, a teacher's aide, these sort of things. He used to have a tackle box of pills for these kids that he was teaching because all of them are on drugs, Ritalin, Adderall, all these different things, right? Why? Because you're putting them into a system for 15,000 hours of their life that isn't teaching them anything relevant about how to survive and thrive. And it's all about indoctrination and capitulation to authority taught with declarative sentences and not a whole lot of questions that can be answered within the confines of that system. Associating involuntarily with a bunch of people you would never normally be around, that sucks for sure. So the ability to get past that is people come out of that system and they're damaged. So you got to be triaged, but there are ways to make heads and tails and figure out where you need to go to stay away from 
the behemoth. Now, when you brought up identity politics, I wanted to push this button real quick. Nope, this button. Uh, the Frankfurt School from 1923 to present for Dude, social here research. we go, man. I've been talking about this all the time. You start yeah. showing, I'm sorry to cut you off. I just yeah. want to set the stage. But yeah. you start talking about this stuff, and all of a sudden, like if you go to Google and you start talking about this, all you do is get bombarded with anti-Semitism because they don't want you looking into this because they want you to run away because you see mean words. This is not anti-Semitism. This is a history and a, a school and a train of thought that has been pushed by very elite people on the rest of us. Yeah, and identity politics, like that started in the 1970s. And you've got uh, people like Soros who took up that philosophy afterwards. Right. You wouldn't have BLM movement without the identity politics that started in the 1970s. And you wouldn't have that without these people embracing like collectivism and globalism and using the Frankfurt School. If I click back to that real quick, that's logical positivism. That's sophism. That's making like using words to reflect things that aren't true and take over people's control through that lie. Right. It's a form of social control. And there's many, many forms of social control, but the Frankfurt School kind of specialized. That's why it's an institute for social research. What do you think they're doing with that? And then I'll tie over here to like cybernetics, because cybernetics is command and control of the human beings using information and technology. And you start wow. digging into like the Macy conferences and you can learn about MK Ultra and the people that fund the CIA and why they did all these types of things. And then you can follow it all the way up to Klaus Schwab. Right. Let me let me do this real quick for you. Klaus Schwab wrote a book. This is it. Fourth Industrial Revolution. That's the right button. Right. Man, your wrote, setup is great. He wrote oh, this book. This guy, he's got cameras on cameras. I'm catching bad guys. He has an appendix. <laughs> it's not called deep shit. It's called deep shift. And over here in his appendix, we're digging into his corpus here. In his appendix, talking about implantable technologies. Right. Well, they've been working and, you know, positive, uh, positive imp impacts. They see some negative impacts, privacy, potential surveillance, decreased data security, increased distractions, right? Increased people's ADD. So implantable technologies is part of the fourth industrial revolution of Schwab, but they've been working on stuff like this since here's one, since I have the camera up 1970s, here's national institutes of health and John Lilly. And they're doing uh, experiments with the CIA and National Institutes of Health into substances that might get flagged on the uh, some of the places you might put this. We don't but put this anywhere. They flag there's adrenochrome it. studies. <laughs> and uh, the, the end of this document, I had noted, see Klaus Schwab's Fourth Industrial Revolution Appendix, because they had in the 1970s. Uh, the final technique Lilly presents in the paper uh, is described as direct electrical injection. Direct electrical injection information into the brain. That's like a that's like an implantable technology, like Klaus is talking about in this book, right? Totally. Oh so, my God! So it's like if I zoom out, this paper. Let's see if we. Uh, this came from Sage. Let's see what the date is on this. This is published in 2019, but it's on John Lilly's experiments back in the, the, the 70s, 80s, up until he died. Adrenochrome hypothesis in psychiatry, Humphrey Osmond, he's the guy who gave uh, Cary Grant LSD during the MK Ultra days, right? Oh my God. So, like, the, when, when they were discovering this in 1967, Hunter S. Thompson had this in fearing low in las vegas in the early 70s how did he get the knowledge out of this intricate paper uh where they are talking about the properties of adrenochrome and what happens when it gets uh oxidized and you know the the secret of nim you guys remember that movie from back in the day no that's the national institutes of mental health where they were conducting these experiments you got people from the rockefeller foundation right so just one document looking in and seeing the connections between mk ultra and what, what they're doing and how they're using these things over time. I mean, John Lilly's famous for a lot of things, but it's not, it, what's brought out in this paper is a little bit different than what most people were familiar with. So having artifacts, we discussed these two things in depth. I think it was Grand Theft World episode three. We spent some time on that, but 
the the technocratic aspect of where they've been trying to inject us with things that control us have command and control of the human being that now seems to be an active active agenda i mean gates and fauci had the decade of the vaccine uh, as listed on the gates foundation website 2010 here we are everyone's got to have a vaccine and in that vaccine we now know from the darpa leak earlier this week um I posted on my Twitter at Tragedy and Hope. There was like 10 posts about the DARPA leak. And I don't know if I believe DARPA's press release, but it did come from them. There's just no redactions. So I think it's a little bit of psychological warfare. And what they say was, Peter Daszak from EcoHealth came to us and wanted to create this chimeric coronavirus with gain of function and uh, fur and cleavage sites and release it into the live human population. And we thought it was a bad idea. So we said no. And here's our rejection letter to him. And then you can also find, I also posted his original request and what they wanted to do was crazy. And the graphics they used are just fucking insane, dude. And this guy was the first guy to come out and say, anyone talking about the COVID is a conspiracy theorist. And he published it in the Lancet using 24 front people hiding his name. But then in November, 2020, this U S right to know network did a FOIA request into his emails and they found that he's like, Hey, don't leave my name out of it. And this whole thing was concocted. So when you put these pieces of evidence together, it makes it really hard to believe the wet market type of thing. Oh yeah. A for sure, the dude. Or something. For yeah. sure, man. I just cannot believe that. I like that. CNN is still trouting out Fauci after and all Anderson this Cooper is and you know, one of the Cuomos that haven't got caught for ask grabbing yet. Somebody who there. is that Cuomo? Because they all yeah. seem to and be Don Lamont. For don't forget shit. about Don Lamont because you can't go or do anything unless you do what he says. How he hates white guys except for the one he's banging in the ass. He must be the master. <laughs> oh, he's got to be the top. He's got to be the top. There is no way. I mean, it's just unbelievable, dude. It is just unbelievable. So, I mean, there's a lot to break down here too. Um, so Trudeau, who, I mean, like if, if you ever want to sit there and go, is there ever a sign? Uh, one or two things happened in the Canadian, uh, election, either one, they completely rigged it. Right. Because <laughs> that guy couldn't go anywhere without just getting mobbed by people telling him he had it or white women once again, voted for the cute guy. Is that uh, the Gavin Newsom move? Is that who got yeah, what oh, dude? I dude, mean, what I love women, God bless you. I love you. I know I pound yeah, women on are you. awesome. And why wouldn't they? Why I think the other side should just run handsome men. That's the only problem when they run. When we had Trump and Britain had Boris, what's his name, with the bad hair, Johnson, I was like, this Johnson. is not accidental. Like they are purposely giving us role models that aren't very role model y. I want to show you where Trudeau comes from. No, nope, not that bad. Here we go. You know, Pierre, it's very interesting, Pierre dude, Trudeau. that that whole thing has, it's very close to the Obama election versus uh, John McCain. They purposely fucking sent out a troll to go up against charismatic black Obama, who, by the way, has very tiny hands and nobody ever talks about that. But the <laughs> point is, is that that is 100%. You're totally right on that. Well, and who was that sketchy whistleblower that did the talk at the National Press Club? Larry Sinclair that had some allegations against Obama and then he turned up dead. Oh, yeah. The, oh, who? The guy who was smoke crack and said he sucked his dick? That one. Is that guy <laughs> dead? I'm pretty sure that that was reported after. Not soon afterwards. I'm not making a claim. I'm just saying uh, from memory. And that's I some thought, brave shit right there to be like, I smoke crack and sucked his dick. I mean, I mean, God bless Julian. He Assange, was out in you know? Oprah, too. <laughs> He was on Oprah talking about that. No, he that? was outing Oprah during that story too. It wasn't just that. That might be what wasn't. got him killed. Honestly, <laughs> she's the one with the power. How about Bill so Gates the other day when he got asked about Epstein? He goes, "Well, he's dead now. You got to be careful." And he <laughs> fucking laughs. Come on, what was that? What just happened there? We're just living in. But I mean, like going back to Trudeau, you see, he he gave a conference. He's like. We just made a deal with Pfizer for uh, X number of vaccines in 2024. All He's right. telling you this thing ain't coming to an end. No, 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 no. So uh, we reported back in February because I read the Pfizer Q1. I, so it was a February 2021 Grand Theft World episode. And I looked at the slides from their presentation to the investors. 
and they're like, Hey, we made a ton of money this year with two shots. And then we're going to up the doses to six doses per year was like the footnote on two slides. So it was already advanced notice that they made money and now they're just going to sell you more than more, more of the same thing and, and space it out. They also have a two a day pill that they're going to come out with and try to make people take. And this is all, there's too many dystopian movies that I've seen to be hip to any of this, man. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's not just like Logan's run and, and uh, brave new world and Fahrenheit 451 and 1984 wrapped together anymore. These people are getting advanced. And I, I think they, I personally believe that they've overstepped. Yeah. They're doing it too fast. They're trying to force change and they don't notice it because they're in a bubble. Yeah. You're totally right. They don't notice it and they don't understand what's going on. And, but this booster thing is where they lose everything. In my humble opinion, that's where they lose everything. But man, you brought up some really great things about the, about the schools, man. And it's like, I love LA. I, I really don't want my daughters grow up in California schools. I, I love the weather here. I would prefer to stay here, but I don't know how, I mean, even the private schools are going nuts with. You could hire Marxism. private tutor, tutors, have a private curriculum approved by someone. Cause California is one of the few States that you have to have homeschooling approved, but we have a client that does that and we could get you set up with the curriculum and you don't have to do it all yourself. A lot of it can be done by other people that are, uh, you know, well experienced in these areas and are private tutors. So a couple times a week, you have a tutor in your house and it's more professional and it's a step down from private school, but it's also like a lot cheaper than a hundred thousand year a year to, for some private school, you know? So the other ones you can I check out are Mont- Montessori, <laughs> Waldorf schools, Steiner schools, uh, but when, the homeschooling curriculum. Go ahead. When you do that, how do you, are you concerned about socialization? What do the people who do that do with their kids to socialize them? That's excellent questions because that's always what people are saying. Well, I don't want to homeschool. Johnny, I asked that excellent uh, question. I want I want my kids to have social skills. People say it's like okay, so you guys know Del Big Tree. Um, yeah, I got, I got an interview with him tomorrow morning for Grand Theft World. But when I first met him, I said, Del, how did you learn to do this stuff? What made you think you could be a producer on the Doctors? He's like, I was homeschooled. I was like, Pfft. right. So homeschooling doesn't mean solo schooling without exposure to the world. It means like. Well, Let's go see how people actually do their jobs. Let's well, make friends that want to do the same thing and we'll pod together and then we can get our pods and do activities with other pods of homeschoolers. So there's a lot of freedom and voluntary association, but it doesn't mean like you have to do everything on your own. And that's what stops most people. COVID has been great for homeschooling because everyone kind of got pushed into it. But now that they're finding resources, they're like, I'm not sending my kids back to school. I've had a lot of friends that I never thought would pull their kids back from school, but they're like, this whole mask wearing thing in school all day is not good. And I'm like, you're right. Here's the OSHA reports on where toxicity comes in with CO2 and it happens in the first couple seconds of putting that mask on, you know, but they don't want you to know that OSHA goes out the window when all these things, cause they're just making shit up as they go. The they social really distancing are. is arbitrary and it was made up some DARPA guy. His daughter did a school science project in 2006, and then it ended up in a Pentagon planning document for pandemics by 2009. And do we so? So what we see is like this movement to for freedom and independence, and then just turning right around and telling them, "No, you don't got that." Great example: our nurses. Nurses were heroes, and then a year later, you're going to get fired if you don't do what we tell you. And now in the NBA, the NBA, there are more than a couple players who are like, "I'm not getting this COVID thing. I'm not getting these vaccinations." And these guys were all allowed to take time off to go march against this, take time off to push wear BLM stuff all over the place because they, you know, in the NBA, we want, we, we respect our players and their wishes to, you know, to be themselves and express their inner, you know, love and their beliefs. And then now you got Kyrie Irving, Bradley Beal, uh, Andrew Wiggins all going, I ain't getting this thing. And now you're seeing the shutting down of let's ostracize, let's get rid of these people. And it's like happening in real time. And it's crazy. Yeah, they invited Nicki Minaj to the White House and she refused to go. <laughs> and I post about this chick. Everyone's like, it's a psyop. And I'm like, oh man, I, I get what you're trying to say. That maybe this chick who was like on the other side suddenly sees there's a giant market. Uh, to play to and she's not but you know what is she saying is what she's saying okay is what she's saying makes sense then why can't we just take it like that you why, judge the why message we, not the messenger 
100%, dude. But, you know, you'd be like, yay, Nicki Minaj. But keep your guard up, dog. Don't be like going for the hug. Be, get your Krav Maga on, dude. Small windows, dog. Small windows. I mean, well, she was going to go to the White House and they were going to do a live like podcast, but she wanted it recorded live. They wouldn't do it live. Of course, because and- he'd be like, look, me poop in my pants. Well, and then they lied about it and said, oh, no, we were only going to do a Zoom meeting with her. We never invited her to the White House because they were so embarrassed. And she, and she comes out and she goes, how stupid do you think I am that I don't know the difference between an invite to do a Zoom meeting and an invitation to the White House? I mean, she's smart as fuck because she realizes that the industry had replaced her with um, who's the other chick? Megan Thee Stallion? No, No, Cardi Cardi B. Cardi B. B. And now she's like, I got this whole niche ray over here. And you know what, man? I don't care, dude. If you come out and you start talking the truth, I'm a, I, I'm a, Hey man, I'm going to support you. I mean, I, again, I'll when keep- they track the MRNA after it goes into the arm, it does collect in the sex organs. So there is scientific, but it could be hyperbolized. She's not a source of news, but there is truth behind what she's saying, which is why some people are supporting it. Right. The people we're playing against first off as a forensic historian, the only war I've ever seen go on in human history is the war against consciousness. And it's waged by those of a lower consciousness against those who are trying to have a higher consciousness and be conscious of, of, of a reality The lower conscious people, they assume they obey, they are obedient. They're subjugated. They are subordinate. That's what they want to make everybody into. Uh, the other part is they're word magicians. And so since the beginning of this, they have changed the definition of uh, herd immunity, yeah. of what a case is. They changed the definition of pandemic, the WHO and CDC back in 2009, right? The, you know, vaccine used to mean immunization, which meant lifetime immunity, immunization, right? But now it's a synthetic pathogen producing gene therapy that was started as a cancer drug by DARPA. DARPA funded all of mRNA, mod, Moderna mode RNA since 2013, tens of millions of dollars. They also funded Peter Daszak and gain a function over here. So it's like from the people who bring you the virus, here comes an antidote, but it's not really the antidote. We'll call it a vaccine and it won't really work and won't be safe and effective, but people will think it is and they'll all fight against each other. They sit back and they're like, more, please, more. I totally you know? agree. I totally agree, man. They're dividing, conquering us between vaccines and not vax. And so much of it is being done by bots. Yeah. It's just, it's just bots are enforcing this fight between each other by, by people tweeting the most illogical bullshit. And, you know, I want to get into a discussion with you about my theory between about we're starting to discover that there's a difference between intelligence and smart intelligence is understanding that there is a system and how to comply with that system. Yeah. You know, it's like you could get somebody who is, uh, uh, you know, I, I've met some of the greatest writers in Hollywood. I mean, these people could write you a script that will blow your mind. They, they just blow your mind. You're like, that is the most eloquently written thing I've ever seen. They wouldn't know how fucking people interact to save their fucking life. And what, so smart is a feel for people of how the world works. Intelligence is understanding the rules of the system. Mm. The other one understands a game. The, another one understands a system. Do you have any thoughts on that? I got lots of thoughts on it. I mean, first, I would say uh, what I've worked on since 2008 is called a comprehensive ontology of cognitive liberty. So there's a freedom versus slavery thing going on in human history. You can see it clearly. How do we delineate that? What are the pieces of grammar, the individual parts? How do they interrelate together? What's the history and causality? What do we need to know as adults to be able to not play into their game? To know that the game is rigged, but that's not a hopeless type of rigged. It means if you learn that, there are other ways to be effective that are outside of their reach because their realm only goes so far. So there's a lot to that. And then um, the other part, I had written a note, but I wrote it over something else because I was trying not to. Oh, I know what it was. I was trying not to interrupt you. So my habit is just to write it down. Dunning-Kruger, people getting dumber, man. So uh, Dunning-Kruger is a study from like 1997. And the gist of the study is that incompetent people have an Unability, they're not able to understand how incompetent they are or their causality on competent people. This is the problem in our society. 
because the group oppressing us is not the most intelligent. They don't have the moral, intellectual, or ethical high ground. They're just fucking loud and obnoxious and are willing to do uncouth things that other people would never participate in. That should not any longer be oppressing people, but I know why it is because they dumbed down schooling. They dumbed down an education system and turned it into that Prussian schooling. When I say Prussian schooling, it works like this. In 1805, Napoleon defeated Prussia, which was the, a German military state, professional soldiers. They sold their Hessian soldiers to King George to fight against the Americans, right? Prussia, a military state, fell to Napoleon's amateur army. And so Prussia was all fucked up. And they're like, what are we going to do about this? This influences uh, von Clausewitz and, and uh, on war. It influences Fichte and uh, his address to the German nations. And basically what they come up with is we can't have our lower people be educated. They're too much of a challenge. They run away on the battlefield. We need trained, obedient workers, soldiers at that time. But as the manufacturing industrial uh, revolution went on, they changed that same system of how to make obedient soldiers that'll walk out into the face of bullets for no reason other than you were told to do it. Hey, we can make them sit at a factory and do these crazy things, right? And then that became a modality that came into America because the Prussians created something called the PhD system a new type of doctor, okay? Some Americans, like the president of Harvard and these other guys, they go over to Prussia and they're like, watch this. And it's like total obedience and control. And these guys are like, how do we bring this back here? Well, you have a couple people who become the experts and authorities and like the white coats, so to speak, in this area. And uh, you can control everything in education. And from there, then they brought in a communist influence into that PhD uh, system to further crack down and alienate students who are giving their families life savings or going into lifetime debt to get an education when that's not going to lead them to success or thrive in the world most likely. Right. Couldn't agree more, man. And it's just systematic, man. It's done purposefully. And this notion, like, and we've seen it, like, you know, whatever. They're just incompetent, Sam. But that only goes so far until you learn something. You're like, they're not incompetent. It's not accidental. This is something highly coordinated, sophisticated, and there's a long chain of abuses and an ominous continuity to that which they are unfolding on us. Yeah, I completely agree, dude. But there's and still this, hope. This thing, like if I hear another person, people I love talk about, I'll listen to the doctors. What doctors are you listening to? What doctors are you talking to? Because doctors get half a day of education on vaccines. The doctors I'm talking to are all like this. The MRNA is not doing what they tell, tell you it's doing. All of them. Virologists. Are t- and we can get into viruses and what they are and what they are not. But all of them are telling me this thing does not do what they're telling you it does. And when you have breakout, like Israel, such an interesting thing. You know, m- the more and more I hear about all the breakouts and deaths in Israel, the more I believe in Kazarian's dog. And this, this, I mean, they're forcing this population to be, and that's a very obedient population. You're looking at an area that is basically from Los Angeles to San Diego. Think about how small that area is and, and how much fucking power that little area has over the entire world. And now you're getting billions and billions of dollars from the West to fucking fund military and make no doubts about it run psyops on your population over and over and over again to the point that you are okay with your public officials referring to Middle Easterns as dogs because you've been psychologically programmed into doing that purposefully. And now you're following the rules of these people and they're giving you this vaccine and you're having breakout numbers that are are fucking blowing it up and how many people are dying all left and right. Israel is going through a real epidemic with that right now. And it's all, be, and you just listen to your leaders because you've been programmed to do that, man. I, I, I'm not going to say the name of this doctor, but I met with a doctor about my, my daughters, right? They just been born. And uh, when your babies are born, the first thing they want to do is give them a hep B shot. Think about that. Hep just in B. case they're sexually molested in the hospital. That is like, that is, they don't even get to the point they can get molested. They're like, just pop her out of the vagina. They want to bang, hit them with a, uh, a fucking vaccine. I go, why are we giving our children a party drug f- fucking disease vaccine? Why are we doing that? And the doctor goes, 
I, I standard I, of care. I go, well, what are you saying that the mom has hepatitis B? Is that why she's like, I, I don't really know why. That's it. When I see someone with a PhD, you know what I think? You can regurgitate the information that you were told to regurgitate better than everybody else around you. I'm not saying that doctors are dumb. I'm not saying that doctors aren't useful. But I'm saying, I, does that mean I'm just going to fucking buy everything that comes out of your mouth? There's good history behind it, too. The, the doctors that we see today are, are practicing allopathic medicine. And there's a, a 1976 book by E. Richard Brown named Rockefeller Medical, uh, what's it called? Rockefeller Medicine Men. Explains how uh, around the world, Rockefeller Foundation money will you, was used to create the educational path to make doctors. They own this shit on lockdown. They make you license it out. Doctors are vaccinate, uh, educated on the vaccines for about half a day during all those years. Of, and then they're, act, they're educated by the pharmaceutical sales reps. I have friends that worked in sales at pharma companies that worked in research at those pharma companies. I've had them talk to us about it. It's not a good thing, but they all got NDAs and they got fat pension or retirement and for they got the, you know, they're not going to make any moves. They not going to blow the whistle. In other words, right? Like when I blew the whistle, when I was younger, I didn't have a family and I had really good skills that I could go anywhere I want and get paid probably more money. So it wasn't a real threat. Like we're going to fire you. If you say something about this today, People are basically getting burned at the stake. They're like canceled forever. They'll get cut off from Amazon and Airbnb and all sorts of other crazy things. You know, it's not encouraging to the culture of truth. And it goes back to the fact if culture is not our friend, then we have to make a culture that is. And it might not be mixed up with the Cuomo's and all these other things that are going on, but it can lead to like more self-reliance, growing your own food, getting clean water, keeping your family safe, healthy and educated and outlast this storm of ignorance that's out there because it ebbs and flows in history right now. It's getting to be high tide of ignorance. It really, I mean, like, and it, like there's times I'm, I'm, I'm stuck on the four Oh five or the one one in LA. And I'm like, I hope you all get the vaccine. I want you all to get it. So you have full blown AIDS. So I can just go see my kids in 10 minutes or less. I don't have to be stuck on a fucking highway for 45 minutes going each way. Um, I want to get into something you want to bring up because I think this is very important, man. Uh, a lot of people, you know, we we bring up Nazis. People's heads explode. Uh, you know, ah, man, punch a Nazi. Now everybody's asking, you know, show me your papers. And they do it not even thinking that they're doing mental gymnastics at that much. The history of the Nazis is very interesting. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to get too black pill on that because it can get really fucking weird, right? And I don't know, you know, you, you said, guy, yeah, you really got to ask yourself, what is, what do I want to do? What do I want to do with the information? Do I want to open people's minds on all this stuff over here? Or do I want to talk about this that's going to get everybody to shut down and, and not even hear what I have to say? And I start hearing this wah, 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 wah conversation going on i want people so I to understand so they can be decisive and take action that leads to predictable results right. outside of that it becomes entertainment so so the nazis are very interesting because the group that started the nazis was basically german's version of the cub scouts and they were called the wandering winds and they were started by uh, people who don't want to hear this called the pink nazis right they call them well, it's called pink Nazis, but it's basically this group of guys who were basically molested in this group who start this fucking Nazi. That's where the Nazi Nationalist Party begins. OK, and then you start getting into all of this shit where the Nazis funding come, who funded it. I mean, do you have any dis any opinions on any of that? All right. I'd lay it out like this. Uh, Rudyard Kipling was a Mason and a big part of the empire, uh, global, British Empire's global conquest movement, right? So he's out there writing poetry. He put swastikas on the spines of all his books. The 1916 women's hockey team for the United States had swastikas on their jerseys. So it was just a sun symbol from like Tibet, but you know, the East, and it was used Hinduism. All over the place. It's right. a Hindu symbol of peace. Right. And so they took that as part of branding and marketing and associated it with the Nazis. The Nazis, uh, it's Germany. You got the Teutonic Knights tradition, but they were also interested in eugenics, which didn't develop there. That was a Cold Spring Harbor laboratory, Long Island, Eastern establishment families, uh, Bushes, Rockefellers, Harrimans, these types of 
people that were into race purification. Even if you go back to Origin of Species by Darwin, read the subtitle or on the Origin of Species or, or the fucking preservation of the favored races tells you where the institutional racism comes from. It's they, them, those who can be easily named. You can call them the Anglo-American establishment. You can call them the pan angles. You can call them the globalists. You can call them the new world order. It's a group of people who think they're better than everybody else. And they have the right to rule you. Where, where, do, you, time. where, where do you put Zionism into that? Because that's a, that's a tricky thing. I don't know why it's tricky. You know, if I go, hey, there's white supremacists out there. People are like, yeah. And I go, well, there's Jewish supremacy out there. Be like, oh, yeah, I see, I see, I see, I see. I said, I say, and I'm like, well, I mean, like, do I mean, like, I through identity politics, everybody's got to be like the notion that one, all Jews move together is just ridiculous, and the notion that that the Jews are unicorns and there's no bad apples is just as equally ridiculous to me, and that's done through identity politics. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So uh, to tie in uh, the, the Nazi part with the, of, of the child abuse with the English part of that, the Boy Scouts came out of the, 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 the scouts from Cecil Rhodes's uh, Rhodesia Scouts. And the guys that were helping him were all into buggery. Right. So there's this whole other tradition. And that's the uh, Anglo American. Hey, so, buggery is uh, anal. Go on. Yeah. So, <laughs> Just so uh, you know. to answer your question about Zionism, uh, Zionism is a, is a, is a, Today, it's a political movement, but it started out with a religious affiliation to return to the home homeland and referencing where I learned about this from the Jewish Encyclopedia, which you can find online. Sabbatized V started to popularize this philosophy. It then became picked up in uh, the 1800s and then utilized by the Rothschild family. Now, the Rothschild family, I've got, I'm in the process of writing a book on them, which turned into two volumes because I've got too much information once you start finding stuff, you just find a lot more than you expected. So I'm still in the process. But from uh, the beginning, what they had done is started to colonize Palestine. So there's some news reports and newspapers in America in the 1830s. And then all the really huge nuggets of truth, like coming from their own sources in their own archives, start in the 1860s. So almost 100 years before they create Israel, after the Balfour Declaration, which is their political merger with the British Empire during World War I, in order to make sure that America gets into the war. And then the, the Council on Foreign Relations and other things help to help, help to manage that Anglo-American and Israeli establishment. So it started as Anglo-American establishment to subjugate America, but then the British cut the deal with the Zionists. And it's literally, uh, they used to have a a website called Balfour100.com for the 100th anniversary, the centennial of the Balfour Declaration. The Balfour Declaration had four drafts. It starts with Lord Rothschild, who says, I would like this. It goes through three other drafts, comes back to him from the British government saying, we'd like to offer you Palestine on behalf of, you know, and so it's a really interesting piece of history. And then Arthur Balfour is an interesting person. He was in the, the American, like the American Psychical Society. He did like a whole bunch of psychic research and and, and actually the Balfour, I think he has a sister, they published the first printing of Mein Kampf in English. So the same guy who brings you the Balfour Declaration also has ties to bringing Hitler's Mein Kampf into the English speaking language. The one last thing, and I'm not saying this adds up to anything, but remember when Prince Harry wore the, uh, the swastika to the fancy dress party on his birthday, right? His birthday is the day the Nazis adopted the swastika. And there was a heavy element of the British royal family who supported all the Nazi stuff, oh, but just yeah. not publicly. European royals were huge into Nazism and Still were are. supporting the Nazis 100%. Yeah. And it just all goes down to, you know, to me, it's all royal bloodlines. Everyone's this group runs it, this group runs it, this group. I think above any group is royal bloodlines. I think World and War I was meant to obscure all that because then you don't have the, the royal bloodlines in, in Russia and Germany and these other places. If you look up the ruling family from World War I, which was the Hohenzollern family in Germany, see how they're doing today. They haven't lost power. They haven't lost wealth. They've just lost attention from the public, which is what they oh, all yeah. wanted. They, I mean, yeah. dude, don't even get me into the, uh, what was that family that I, I, I did and we got in big trouble for? The Pissar. The, the, Pissar. the, the Pissar family. Like, dude, Pissar. try looking into the Pissar family, dude. Yeah. They, they just hide all that. We talked about on one show, every one of the tech companies in one week fuck with me. 
they're just like, no, we don't. And then he put out, so then somebody put out a cryptic tweet going, somebody talks about my family. I don't put up with this shit. I'm like, <laughs> damn, dude. You're damn. like, we don't have the budget for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, but it's just like, it's like layered upon layer upon layer. So the question gets to like, what are we going to do? Because right. I think they're losing this battle and, you know, I can get, I don't know, Richard, how much you're into like, you know, interdimensional shit. I'm really into it. Like our last guy, we had, we had Dave from Generation Z, Z on and he brought up something that I go, man, that, that really resonates with me. And that is. You know, the whole notion, if you talk to black pills, they think that the only stuff on the internet is what the inter it, the intelligence communities will allow us to have on, and they do it purposefully. And there's some, you know, nonlinear warfare. You know, you see the Soros supporting some people that you would think, oh, why would he want to support them? And be Well, because it adds to the chaos of our hating each other. But there's also a point, and this is what Dave from Generation Z brought up, is that there could be entities that are at work that won't allow them to completely shut down the internet. And that this flow of information that seems to be waking up more and more people all the time is happening because they don't have the power to completely control everything all the time. Even in China, I've been, there, I used to go to China all the time to do stand up. I get paid shit, but I just like, man, I get to go do stand up in China. <laughs> That's pretty fucking cool. And I would go there. And they'd be like, okay, if you want to get on this, just use this VPN. And I'm like, we're, this is how we defeat the communist fucking government is with a simple VPN. But it, there I was watching porn or doing whatever I wanted to do because I used to be really shady back in the day, you know? And uh, so it's like, what if there is these entities that are at work that are allowing the free flow of information to be out there? Uh, that the like Joe Biden would love to shut down everything. I mean, they consistently have secret meetings in Washington D.C. telling these tech companies shut it down. And guess what? They're not. What well, most of the tech origin? I worked at a lot of tech companies over my career, and most of the tech people are freedom oriented and pretty cool. And it's the people in the other parts of the bureaucracy that get uh, as the wokeism going on. So there's a deep essence of freedom interconnected with technology which was brought to us by the war department i mean it's arpa that we're using for this meeting right now right arpa made the internet these sort of things like it trickles down we can use this for freedom but a lot of people just use it to watch cat and yarn videos and stupid shit right so right. it's about what we like all the tools have a all the technologies first off when you create a new technology you lose an old one and they all new technologies old technologies have two edges like what are you going to do with it so it comes back to how does it change what you're going to do today to survive and thrive and tomorrow and plan out your future, these sort of things. And if it's not tangible, then it's entertainment. Right. I also go back to the, the stoicism aspect of, uh, you know, that, which I can't control. I'm not going to worry about and that, which I can control. I'm going to make plans and do something about, I'm not going to sit around and worry about it. So being able to see that, uh, yeah, there might be, uh, something other that has not been evidentiarily, uh, examined or expressed cogently so that people get it going on but to talk about that literally is to talk about no thing there's no thing there to talk about so that might be going on but we don't have the conscious capacity to articulate it yet it's beyond our humanness right now but maybe in 10 20 i don't know years we could better articulate that and this has happened all throughout his history as we've continued to evolve our ideas um i have looked at thousands of years of human history I've gone through, you know, all sorts of ancient books and looked into people who have looked into even deeper archives and their life's work and what they've found. And I have interest in aliens and ex like extra dimensional beings, this sort of stuff, but I haven't seen evidence of that. I've seen evidence of human beings playing tricks on other human beings throughout history as a way, a form of control, right? Playing on those unknowns. Uh, if you don't do X, Y, Z, I'm going to make the sun go away. You know, those types of things where someone's got a little more information, they get to drop on somebody. I don't consider that intelligence. I consider that like predatory because they don't know how to meet their needs in a peaceful, voluntary way. They have to prey on other people. It's a lower form of being, you know. So this ability to see that there's imperfections in the world. We don't know everything. We're born into this game. It's already going on. What are the rules? People break the rules. It's all sorts. But it comes back to how do you keep a roof over your head, the electricity on, water, you know, plumbing, health, you know, food, all these other basics of life. 
and then you're smoothing it. Oh, you can have some luxuries. You can have some wants. You can help some other people by delivering value and utility to, utility to them. And you can live a higher lifestyle. Great. But you should also just know how to survive and thrive with your own mind, that your mind is your greatest weapon. It's your greatest skill set. It's your greatest productivity. It's your greatest imagining of how to conquer these challenges that lay ahead of us in any of our journeys. And they want us to shut it off so they can control us. I think it's very unnatural. I don't think the universe created us so that we could be dumbed down and enslaved, but I think we have to be dumbed down and enslaved in order to understand and appreciate freedom, to be able to rise up to that occasion, realize it's not genetically inherited. It has to be learned generation by generation and, and kind of re-embodied and reinvigorated through action. So, so, you know, you, it sounds like you're not really into aliens. I don't know if that in, in includes interdimensional. Like if where I, do if you I, think well, we okay, I'll, I'll give you two halves. If after I'm done with a six or seven hour lecture and question and answer session, it's four in the morning and I need to go to sleep, I will pop on ancient aliens and watch the dude with the big hair. Tell me some, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I, ancient aliens theorize blank is the, like the whole format of the show. So I can go to sleep. Right. On the other hand, um, I had done some heavy research and studies into psychedelics and rites of passage and these things like 20 years ago. And um, I got into, um, I wanted to interview some of these authors because I could, because I had that skill set. So I, I, uh, I covered the premiere of DMT, the spirit molecule, because I was friends with the, the guy who made it, Mitch Schultz. And then I got to meet uh, Rick Strassman. And being able to, like, I had taught myself how to do camera, audio, lighting right before trying to go and do these things. So it was great, like throw myself into the unknown, into the learning experience, learn more about these other things that I had experienced and I wanted more details and like uh, academic knowledge on, not just subjective experience, but what, what have other people gathered on these topics, you know? And uh, so in that aspect, this is not the only dimension, right? But uh, it's the only dimension we can access together, it seems, right? Like, so there's more to life than what is here in everyday waking conscious state, right? And dreams like give us that. a hint of that. I like that. Are you, do you uh, practice any spirituality in your life, Richard? Kindness and love. Cause I think all the other organized forms of that have become corrupt over time. Like look at a church. I don't have anything against churches. I grew up as a Presbyterian Christian and I went to Sunday school and sang the songs. It's not what made me a good person. Being around good people who took good actions did that, right? What I see as a grown-up is, huh, man builds this building, blocks out nature. Man puts pictures and windows to block out nature. It's like, if you want to celebrate God for a day, go out with your family and go hiking or kayaking or canoe, like do something with love and kindness and help and utility to others. That's the way to celebrate life. And uh, that's, that's kind of my view on it, yeah. And not only that, you have the guy hanging in his worst position ever. It's all sad. It's not happy, yeah, happy. It's so weird, right? Yeah. I like Bill Hicks's joke about, you know, thinking of you, thinking of you, Jackie. <laughs> They'd have like JFK. Because you know, it's, yeah, it's a crucif. It's like a evidence of we murdered your guy and we corrupted yeah. his story. What was the council of Nicaea? Oh, 300 years later, these guys voted in, on the word of God. Well, what did they take out of that story? That's some interesting shit. Right. So th these are all things that I discovered because it was like I was trying to understand other religions. I had grown up in mine and I knew about Catholics and they had to go to cancel cartoon day on Saturday and these sort of things. But I didn't know there was like 14,000 flavors of Protestants, you know, after uh, Martin Luther Protest Protestantism, like there's all these. And I'm like, who was who, who's got the right one? Which one's right? There's, you know, and then there's, you know, Hinduism, uh, Sikhism, Taoism, all, all these different isms. Right. And then it's like John Lennon had said, I don't believe in isms. I just believe in me. Right. So there is that that notion of even though Imagine might be about the new world order. That one time John Lennon said this thing that I think. Was <laughs> don't say that. Johnny no, no, gets no. sad. Um, no, I don't want to get sad about the Beatles. I love the Beatles. Johnny the loves the Beatles. And if you say anything other than they are the greatest thing ever. Well, since I, I, ever. I mean, John Lennon, the, the government spent, you know, a better part of a decade trying to yeah. get him kicked oh. out of the country. Hey, so who I, do you think killed John Lennon? <laughs> I, think, I mean, I think they brainwashed the guy into killing him. Yeah. Yes. Well, they had they brainwashed the guy to be there to be blamed for the killing. But if you knew that there was an Operation Forty assassin working the door behind John Lennon named yep. Jose, Jose Perdomo, yeah, I've read that book. Yeah. Well, there's other evidence other than I have. I don't have that book, but there's it's other a, evidence. It's an ebook. It's like an ebook thing. I, yeah. Right on. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so I mean, I, which brings us to an interesting thing today. John Hinckley got released unconditionally. Oh, How wow. crazy is that? Just about as crazy I'll, as if they let Sirhan Sirhan go. You're like, why? Well, yeah, that's yeah. true. Kennedy well, you was know, shot from the back. Sirhan was in the front. I'm not sure what people think. Well, Robert there. Kennedy there Jr. Which were there. there were people who were right next to him and said that, that Sirhan Sirhan wasn't the guy that killed uh, Robert yeah. Kennedy. I mean, people there. His own son says it was the sheriff that was basically there that shot him from behind. I mean, Jesus Christ, dude. So crazy, bro. But it's like nobody talks about how Hinkley was like, Uncle George told me to do it. Yeah. And like world vision, man. Like, yeah. So the whole Hinkley Bush connection is just about as creepy as the Bush bin Laden connection or the, the whole... Bush Obama connection. What's the Bush Obama connection? His grandfather, well, and I know it's going to sound like really distant, but they're 10th cousins, right? His mm. grandfather and George Bush, which is only like three grandmas away. But they both helped run the CIA. They basically created it, George Bush Sr. and Obama's grandfather. Yeah, the elite classes create the intelligence agencies as, uh, as fronts to interface and gather intelligence on competition so they don't get caught with black marketeering and all the other ruthless things that they're doing out there. So MI6 comes from the East India Company. If you look at early MI6 directors, they're coming from like De Beers and other places from within their own establishment. And it's a, it's a front for those organizations. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. I, I believe a lot of it is also uh, Jesuit. I think the Jesuits are just fronts for the black nobility. And they're, they, you know, that whether it's CIA, um, Mossad, you know, MI5, I think they're all just connected and they're just, it's a different name and for a different region, but they all work together and they all have the same thing. And that's, you know, that's, it's just now, layers on layers. Dog. This layers Venetian on. black nobility you're talking about, does it look like this? Does it have something to do with uh, secret societies and yeah, uh, dude, uh, sex slavery, you, bro. right? And then you got uh, people who are interested, like Giordano Bruno and the Venetian. There, there's, there's tons. The, the good thing is, like on the left side of my models, you could hear content from which I modeled this. Let's see if there's there should be a Webster Tarpley. There's Lord Palmerston Zoo, so you could click here. And hear all about the Venetian black nobility in great detail. Everything over here on the left is in this video, right? And it's already in the model. What is so, this website? Oh, uh, this is, uh, I, I use this software. It's called The Brain. And I make a model. This is the, the model that has uh, 10,000 thoughts and 50,000 connections. It's called The History Blueprint. And in here, it's all connected back to the original source materials from the stuff that I studied to learn what I learned. And I made it so I could share what I learned with others without... Uh, being so conspiratorial tinfoil hatty hey. <laughs> so, uh, so tell me about black link. nobility what i, do I you could send you a to? link after the show and then you could access this and anybody could access this on the uh the interwebs do you believe in the black nobility richard i don't know that it uh still is what it used to be i'm sure it still exists it had power it passed off its power to the fuggers f-u-g-g-e-r who are they, dude? They, they were the banking family uh, and the Lombard Lombard family. They were the families before the Rothschilds conglomerated. Man, right? we're the fuggers, man. <laughs> Yeehaw, man, we're the fuggers. Yeah, that's such a great yeah. name. This the is fuggers. Papa Fugger. This is Mother Fugger. This he was is the rich, Mother they, Fugger. It could have started because they're, they're like, who's that? And they're like, that's the rich fugger. <laughs> that's yeah. the rich fuggers so then that's uh, the best and this is there's two good presentations the lord Palmer, palmerston zoo because lord palmerston was involved with the british east india company and he had a collection of people and that's the zoo right so that presentation or the one in the model uh webster tarpley on directly the venetian conspiracy but it's about the venetian no black nobility and i could give you the names it's right here let's might as well just look at it like that the venetian conspiracy and then uh, uh pico della mirandola was one of the main players in that conspiracy of the the black nobility so these would be his influence on freemasonry his influence on uh the alchemist uh, agrippa uh the italian renaissance influence neoplatonism which comes down today to like uh neo cons neo a frankfurt school type thing uh, and his ties, to, uh, patronage from the Medici family here. 
the Medici and, family. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know about the Medici family? <laughs> yeah, I do, man. But that's a pretty fa- powerful family. Yeah. And there's a, there's a whole bunch in history. It's really cool. I went in and I was like, who are all the kings and queens of England? And then it took me like two days to ask and answer all those questions, put them in the model. But I can go back to like, I don't know, 300 or 700 and then come forward. And then when I'm watching a show, like, I don't know, 10 years ago, the Tudors, I could understand better the, the dynamics between the, the two sides and, the, you know, things that are going on today in Ireland and England, the Protestants and the Catholics, they start like hundreds of years ago. So just like to understand what's going on in Israel and Palestine, you need to at least go back to the 17, 1800s when other people started going in and reappropriating the land of the Palestinians, you know, Uh and I'm not on, I'm on the side of how about let's not kill each other over trivial things and both sides do some crazy things, but the giving away of land, that's not yours. That's the British empire that stirred all that up. So now Israel's left to fight with the Palestinians, but they didn't start the fight. They're not going to end the fight. The people who could, take other people's land and they promised it i mean this is the story of lawrence of arabia how they were like hey arabs we're gonna do this whole thing for you but then and then this is explained away i don't yeah i do have the book here this book right here is from whistleblowers from within the the establishment notice the united states flag is upside down it's a sign of distress the union jack is overwhelmingly bigger and in here carol quigley who was a georgetown professor of uh, the school of foreign service he was bill clinton's mentor he was mentored by Rhodes scholars he wrote this book from the whistleblowers inside the Rhodes roundtable secret society in this book he talks about um it came time to choose between the palestinians and the zionists and while they found the the arabs to be very affable and they like hanging out and they like their food that the zionists were affect uh, affected with banking and they had the relationships set up and it was a better use for the empire to partner with design so it talks about from people within the group that did these things why they did these things and it's a history that uh, needs to be better understood if you're going to look into any of these situations and have a clear cogent understanding and be able to bring any good to the situation without destroying things you don't understand Dude, I love it, man. Richard, I need to get you back just to talk royalty and stuff like that. Right now, we got. I would, I would enjoy that. Yeah, how, I didn't even look. We've been just chatting for a while. Yeah, I would do that, man, because I, I love that topic because I think that's way more important. Final, uh, final thoughts, and then I just want you to do another pitch on, uh, you know, your your school. So, yeah. Um, do you think history's been erased and rewritten? I- I don't think any of the history handed down to us, especially by schooling or supported by mainstream media in any way reflects what actually happened between the people, that all history is going to have some subjective bias to it. And then it's hard to write as a human being going through the struggle as an objective person. So you take the pieces that seem to uh, flesh out in evidence and uh, can be brought into congruency. And when you have no contradictions remaining, let's call that understanding. And that's something worth passing off to other people because you have the references and you can explain your observations, your materials, your step-by-step reasoning to your conclusion. And that's something people can take for themselves and use and utilize. That's useful. It provides utility. utility. When I just say, I heard something and it's arbitrary and it's assumptive, that's negative for people. If they take that as currency and try to spend it, they're going to get bit like it's counterfeit. So it's about learning how to ask the questions first. Like, I guess it would start here. We are controlled by stimulus reaction. That's how they enslave people here. So if you have, if it's stimulus followed by reaction, you're an enslaved being. If you have stimulus, make some space, ask some questions, do some observation. Let's have a thoughtful response. Then you can be a freedom oriented individual, protect your own freedom and defend other people's freedom by not taking it away from them, right? That difference between stimulus reaction and stimulus thought and response is the difference between freedom and slavery. So if we can get more people just to stop reacting to what they hear, stop. And if it's important enough, ask some questions, find some valid answers, have open discussions with other people, be open to being wrong. There's no there's nothing worse than thinking you're right and being closed to other information that would help you make a better position. I'm open to being wrong. I'm wrong every day. I don't have a high respect for my intellect today because I know how much I've learned today. And that means I couldn't have been that smart yesterday. I'm with so you. I just try to keep it real. I realize how stupid I am. <laughs> what is that? Johnny, that means you're above, Dun- you're above Dunning Kruger then. Most people <laughs> don't realize how stupid we are how stupid i truly am dude richard grove came he dropped the hammer of the gods on us uh and i feel like we just 
got started. So I, I feel like we could do a, a ton more, but I want you real quick one more time. Tell us about your school and how you help train people to, you know, save themselves. Like, sure. you know, nobody's coming to save you. You got to save yourself. All right. So uh, the school is called the University of Reason. And within the school, there are many courses. You could go to autonomyagora.com or autonomy agora. Some people would say it. You can see a whole bunch of courses we've produced for others in the liberty and freedom community. And you can sample a lot of those for free and get a feel for it. What I do at Autonomy, that's the flagship course in the University of Reason, is I put students through a 12-week intensive training course that's curriculum integration exercises, meaning one-on-one -on -one participation and, and refining these skills and practicing and owning these skills with other students. And then there's a community aspect. And since everything's a lifetime enrollment, the friends and the, the relationships you make during your first season, they continue to unfold after that. Many students have gone through the course already five times and graduated. So there's there's all there's ultimately more value than anyone can get on their first time through so the relationships um that's a missing ingredient in a lot of people's uh you know success recipe but the other parts are the the methods the principles the strategies of how to get things done what your offer is to the world how to express it how to take that to market and have money come in from the actions you take and know if you have a money problem i just need my offer plus some marketing and if i do these steps money comes in that takes the weight off your shoulders. It allows you to operate freely in the world, have a lot more options. And when you're informed and you have those options, that's more freedom. So ultimately, that's what autonomy is all about, giving you a much higher level of freedom in a much shorter time than you would ever get it accidentally. Well, dude, I'm in. I'm get autonomy.info forward slash ignite. So uh, we will include all those links in the description. Thank you for coming. Drop a keg of wolf bass on us. It was wonderful, Rich. I'm glad we finally made it happen. We've been talking about doing this for a while, so I'm glad it finally happened. I hope you guys enjoyed this. hope you guys got a lot of it. This will be hopefully one of many appearances Richard makes on Tim Fall Hat. I can't wait to do it again. I love you all very much. Check out the new T-shirts that are available on TimFallHatT-shirts.com. New dates added. Again, Miami. I'm going to be there mid-October playing the improv. Me, Howie Dewey. Come get weird with us, dude. I, I, th let me just tell you, Miami's the only place that I I'm going to be there multiple times because I love the city so much. I love to go to South Beach and just watch the creatures roam. It's like the fucking cantina from Star Wars for me. I could just sit there and watch all the lovely creatures. Uh, I love you all very much. Again, grab your tickets to the 500. We are honestly getting very close to the first show being sold out. So once they're gone, they are gone. I love you guys very much. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Xavier. Thank you, Johnny. We will do it again soon. Take care, everybody. We go deep, homeboy. <laughs> Eric, open your mind. <laughs> Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. <laughs> That's some interdimensional <laughs> shit. <laughs> Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hack. Tim foil hack.